Cora TV. The world is thinking. If we're still in Iraq, when you take office, what would you do immediately after taking office? I, I want everyone in this room in San Francisco, California, to understand something. The Democratic Party has the power right now to tell the president, and we don't need a vote to do this. I want it well understood. We don't need a vote to do this. We tell the president, Mr. President, seven weeks ago we gave you $97 billion. That money is there for funding this war until October 1st and then beyond that. Use that money. It takes five to ten billion dollars to bring the troops home. Use that money to bring the troops home and to set in motion an international peacekeeping and security force that would move in as our troops leave. The Democratic Party made a promise to the American people in 2006 to get out of Iraq and it, we cannot wait till the election of the next president. It's time for the Democrats to show up and to be square with the American people on the issue of Iraq. Now, in the Kucinich Doctrine of Strength Through Peace, of course, in my first week in office, I'll take, I'll take steps to bring the troops home if Congress hasn't done the right thing by then. Unfortunately, I, I don't want to have to get elected without a Democratic Congress. And frankly, if the Democrats don't deliver on this, there's not going to be a Democratic Congress. And, and they'll have themselves to blame for it. I'm trying to save our party from itself on this issue of Iraq. But what I will do is to, is to move in the following way. Number one, to, to set a plan to bring the troops home in three months. Number two, to set in motion a plan for, uh, for honest reconstruction. All U.S. contractors and mercenaries have to get out of Iraq. Number three, to have a program for reconciliation between the Shiites, the Sunnis, and the Kurds. That cannot happen while the occupation is continuing. Number four, to have a program for reparations. Over a million innocent Iraqis have died as a result of this conflict. I'm extrapolating from a Lancet study that was done last year. Let me tell you something. This is a blot on American history. This has undermined our position in the world. It has undermined our moral authority. It strikes at the heart of who we are as Americans. And we must make good to the Iraqi people, to the damage that we have done to their families and to their, to their husbands, their wives, their children. We must repair that breach that has been created, and I intend to do that. Number five. Part of the responsibility of a president is to stop the theft of Iraqi oil. We must get the U.S. oil companies out of there unless Iraq has its own business dealings with it. The U.S. has been trying to put pressure the government of Iraq to pass a hydrocarbon act. I'm the person who exposed that in the Congress, Joe, and let me tell you something. That effort is still going on. Iraq is sitting on, a, on, a, on oil that is worth potentially $30 trillion. And, and, this, and our government is pushing the Iraq government to try to privatize its oil. The Iraq people must control their own natural resources. The Iraq people must have the chance to work and integrate with the world community. That's why my plan for peace involves reaching out to the world community and to the countries of the region, to Syria and Iran and the, and, and the countries of the region so that we can create this peacekeeping and security force to help stabilize Iraq. So I've thought about this. I've written a bill, H.R. 1234, that's a plan for stabilization. And, and Iraq is something that I, I will deal with to continue stability if we're out by then or to bring it if we're not.